Now, let me bring in Nicholas Owen now, former BBC News presenter, to go through the papers with me. Um, it's very interesting, isn't it, in terms of um, you, Les, and indeed the by-election very much dominating the news agenda, Nicholas. You'd expect that, but actually, if they hadn't won in Uxbridge or retained Uxbridge, the Tories, actually the Sunday papers would be quite boring. They would. This has added a new dilemma. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. so we're talking about perhaps a ULES U-turn, Sunday Times front page, talking about can't to rethink ULES, Sunday Telegraph. We've had another U-turn from Michael Gove. Wasn't he the Environment Secretary that was pushing all these policies, Nick? He was, very much so, under Theresa May. Remember, yeah. uh, that, uh, uh, previous Prime Minister, but how many? I can't quite remember. Yeah, uh, uh, two, uh, three, I think. Two, uh, two, two or yes. three, yes. Uh, yes, indeed, he was very much the uh, apostle, if you like, the man who said, by 2050, we have to be net zero. That was what he said, and he kept on saying it. Now, suddenly, he's talking about not turning this whole thing into a religious crusade. Yeah. Does that mean to say abandoning such targets? Interesting to me, you know, that Michael Gove... Um, there was this, I, I, I'm sure I read, I didn't dream this, mm. somewhere that he, if in the event of a Labour victory at the next election, not to be taken for granted, of course, but if uh, Sir Keir Starmer does become our Prime Minister, he and uh, Michael Gove might sort of see a bit more eye to eye and Gove might become some sort of um, Labour advisor or something like that. Perish the thought! Can you imagine? Oh, can you imagine? But it is interesting that, it, that Michael Gove is willing to come out now and say, oh, hang on, let's just stop and think about this. And in the background, of course, is... Ulez, the great uh, argument in London. I yeah. mean, this, this, this is really... That's what turned the Uxbridge by-election, of, of, of course, on its head and could do in other parts of the country as well. I mean, did you think that that was a kind of revolt against Khan? Does it say much about the Tories for them to just retain that seat by 400? Rishi Sunak's gone down there and said, this means that we can't make any predictions for the general election. But it was still a pretty dire picture for the Conservatives. It, it was it? a very close-run thing, wasn't it? Really very, very close-run thing. Um, the, the, the word now is that uh, Sunak is going to spend the, spend the summer energising the party, sticking to his five main principles and all this sort of thing, and whipping people into line. And I, 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 Well, people into line, you know, just make sure the Tories are sort of speaking with one voice when it comes to the actual election yes. campaign. The election could be... Just about 12 months away, yeah, at most, I mean, one would have thought. We think it's going to be autumn 2024. There was a report in the week to suggest it might be spring 2024, but that could be foolhardy because aren't the Conservatives waiting to make a bit more economic capital? They want inflation to come right down. Mm. They want people to feel that they've got more money in their pockets and that's probably more likely to happen next autumn than it will next spring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it seems to me to be a desperate timetable that's involved here. Yes. And, and in the background, something that didn't seem to get too much of a mention... Um, the extraordinarily large number of Conservative MPs who've already said they're not going to stand for various reasons, know yeah. they're going to be beaten or just don't want to do it anymore. Uh, so th there's an awful lot of things uh, going wrong for the Tories, but really going wrong for them. One or two small things that are not going quite so wrong. A piece of uh, the Sunday Times, Peter Kellner, yeah, very respected so figure. They lost... Lost Tories key to 40 seats. Yeah. And he's making this point that the PM can woo these voters back. They haven't switched to Labour like they did in 1997 when you had Tories already mm. speaking about Tony Blair and this new revolution. Yeah. They haven't decided on anything. They don't even know if they've decided that they're going to turn out whenever it, the next election Indeed. Well, is. that's one of the things, particularly the Selby by-election, yeah. it was the absence of Tory voters. That was the interesting thing, of the people who just stayed away completely. So if you take the stayaways... And and you take those who really don't say they, they don't know yet, you put those two figures together, there's a glimmer of hope for the Conservatives. Yeah, Kellner for, reckons for, for... that there are 40 seats where the undecideds are probably the majority view, and therefore, when we look at any of this polling, if we're not including the don't knows, then it's distorting the picture of how far Labour are ahead. Starmer doesn't seem to have captured hearts and minds, Nicholas. No, he doesn't. And and he does have this problem now, particularly about the London situation. Sadiq Khan, the Mayor of London, said to be reconsidering, said to be reconsidering uh, the extension of you. That so weak. I mean, oh. I think Sadiq Khan is a man not without ego. Is he going to start caving into Starmer? What's your instinct on that? Well, I think uh, it, will, it will come down to whether Starmer can really wield the authority within yeah. the Labour Party to, to insist that there be at least... that they could delay it, couldn't they? they could uh, delay that they could go, go for but a further consultation. That, won't if you, they? If you, well, yes, but if you delay it long enough, delay it long yeah. enough and say, yes, we're really giving this consideration, perhaps the old long grass might just come in handy for Starmer.
Let's just have a very quick look at the summer strategies that both sides are going to deploy. So, on one hand, the Telegraph is reporting that there's going to be true blue boot camps to save Tories' soul. Mm. They're also saying in the sun, gloves are off, Sunak on attack in battle for number 10. Do you think people pay much notice to what either party are doing in the summer? Well, I, I, it goes back to what I said at the beginning about the shortage of time, really. Yeah. I mean, these months are going to fly by very, very quickly. Uh, I, I think there's no doubt that if... It, in, in Rishi Sunak's position, he's got to get his, this thing sorted out. He's got to really show toughness now. I mean, I think there's this view of Rishi Sunak that he's somehow a, a, a good man in many ways, you know, and hard-working uh, hard -working and all the other things. But is he really tough and ruthless enough to really go and sort of rip the heart out of what Labour... ruthlessly towards Boris Johnson, so there's... Yes. It's in uh, him. Maybe that's... Can he unleash it? Yeah. Let's... Um, I'm going to... I want to ask you about the BBC row involving oh. my colleagues and our colleagues, sometime Nigel Farage and the oh. banking situation. Yes. Simon Jack, the correspondent that reported this story that Business basically editor. Mm. he'd been uh, kind of disbanded from Coots, banned by Coots because he didn't have sufficient mm. funds. He did the subject asset access request, found out it was actually because of his political views. Mm. Simon Jack's still refusing to apologise. I mean, I find that quite astonishing because as a journalist, if you get it wrong, you have to say mea culpa. Well, ab absolutely. I mean, the, the, the dear old... The broken biscuit company. Have I have I used that word before? Is that how you're I think it these I, days? I, when I worked at the BBC, I loved them dearly. I, uh, but I did call them the Broken Biscuit Company because the way the way the way it is run, or rather rather uh, inefficiently run. Yeah. This is another classic example we had with the whole terrible Hugh Edwards saga. Most of the so much of the blame there is the BBC's reaction to things, mm. how it gets on with things. This is a classic, another classic to me. As soon as it was evident, let's be honest, Simon Jack is a jolly good journalist, yeah. jolly good at his job, and he sits next to a banker who gives him a line on the Nigel Farage story. Well, of course he's going to go with that. It's yes. a jolly good source. Yes. But if that source turns out to be wrong. Yeah. Get it, get the, the facts are simply the other way around, as Nigel himself has now discovered in great detail. Yeah. Then, for goodness sake, just put your hands up and say... Why can't the BBC handle any of these crises uh, well? And why, Simon, come on, lad. Just, just say... Sorry, got that wrong. Yes, uh, 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 it turns out that my, my, my source was, uh, you know, trying to cover something up, which is what it looks like, doesn't yeah, very it? very much so. And that in itself is, you know, puts you at the heart of a jolly good story, shows you have uh, jolly good instincts. Sometimes those instincts are proved to be wrong. Go out there and say it, admit it, Why and not? get on with it. Very but the BBC... Oh, it moves no, so slow. I know. It's the broken biscuits. Still, but the also broken biscuits. It's kind of, it's just not, I don't know, the comms reaction to a lot of the stories. We haven't had a newspaper review in the last six to eight weeks, probably beyond, that hasn't featured one BBC crisis or another. Mm. It's just a extraordinary. Very, very quick word on what I'm calling the great fat Britons of the day story. Oh, yes. Sunday <laughs> Times. Green man slows down to help unfit pedestrians keep up. Come on now. Well, Since yes. We get enough time to cross the road. Apparently people are now too obese to get across the road quickly. Well, it's, it, it is two things. Let, let's be clear about this. It's not only um, you get six and a half seconds, I think, and they want to make it 7.1 seconds, a 20% yes. increase in the green man so that you can get across. But uh, it, I'm afraid it's not just because apparently we have a population which is obese and getting unfit and can't cross the road. It's also for... Elderly folk, there are more and more oh, of us okay. around, and we the find oldies. it a bit struggle. Not but necessarily the fatties. No, exactly, exactly. Am I allowed to say that anymore? Probably not, no. <laughs> I don't think you are. But you know what gets my goat? It's the fact that everybody, young, old, whatever they are now, almost everybody under the age sort of about 50, always walk up to the traffic lights and always press the button, whether there's traffic around or yes. not. And that, I think, this sort of... We can't be trusted to sort no, of mind our own way state, crossing the road. It's state on steroids, yes, perhaps. Yes, yes, yes. Nicholas Owen, as ever, it's been an absolute pleasure. I'm afraid our time is up together, but thank you very much for coming in on this that Sunday morning. It went past so fast. I know, I'm, it always does. It, it always does, does. It always does.